What's happening guys, Chris here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the lowdown on that K-16 Briar pistol from Star Wars Battlefront's Death Star DLC. It's a very unique blaster pistol with two firing modes that can both fire in a semi-auto fashion and also charge up his energy to unleash an extremely powerful singular shot. So it's kind of like Star Wars' answer to Halo's plasma pistol. The K-16 is based off the original Briar pistol, first seen in the 1995 game Star Wars Dark Forces, though it became more recognisable a little bit later on in Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, which is where it first features that charge-up system. The Briar pistol was wielded by the Rebel operative and Jedi Kyle Katarn, who used it alongside his lightsaber in battle, but mainly as a backup weapon. It's a modified version of the Briar rifle, which was first given to Kyle as a gift from his father, but sawed down and converted into a pistol instead. Anyway, if you want to unlock the K-16 for yourself, you're going to have to do a few things first. For starters, you're going to need that Death Star DLC installed, and then you can head on over to Jabba and purchase the Dark Enforcer contract for 3,500 of your in-game credits. Just like normal, you receive another few challenges to go out and complete, and once you've done them, the K-16 will be all yours. So the first task, you'll just need to get yourself 10 kills with blaster pistols. Pretty easy and shouldn't take too much time to do. The kills don't need to be within a specific game mode or anything, just get yourself 10 kills with pistol type guns like the DH-17, DL-44 or the SE-14C, and these are all going to add up over your matches. Probably won't take too long and isn't really anything to worry about. Challenge number 2 however, might take a bit longer to complete, as you'll need to get yourself 25 kills whilst playing as Han Solo. Once again, it's nothing really too complicated, though getting the chance to actually play as Han doesn't come all that often. And not only will you need to find hero pickups, but you'll also need to be on the Rebel team, along with actually getting the kills too. You could hop into a few game modes which support hero pickups like Walker Assault and Supremacy. This will be good to get loads of kills in a streak whilst playing as Han, as you'll be much more powerful than everyone else, and you can just stay back and gun people down from afar to get lots of kills one by one. Though actually becoming a hero in those game modes can be a little bit tricky, with those pickup places being randomised. So your best bet is probably to play in heroes versus villains, and selecting hand whenever you get the chance. If you're going to do this, focus on staying alive by playing defensively, and mainly go for the other non-hero players, as these are going to be much easier to kill. Avoid enemy villains, especially Darth Vader and Sidious, and be extra careful not to die. Sounds kind of obvious really, but being all gung-ho and running into a hectic fight will usually just get you killed. But after grinding 25 kills with Han, you'll then be able to tick this requirement off the list. Thankfully, there's quite a lot of characters in the Hero Roaster now, and with Han being a base game character, less people are probably going to race to be him, unless they're also going for this challenge, that is. As for the final task, you'll need to get three blaster pistol streaks, and this is done by getting seven kills with blaster pistols in a match. The kills don't need to be done within a single life, just so long as you get seven kills with a blaster pistol in a match, and it'll count as a streak. Do this three times and you'll complete this challenge too, and then you'll finally unlock that K-16 Briar Pistol. So as for the weapon itself, the K-16 is a pretty interesting gun that's better for passive aggressive players, as it can be a fairly risky weapon to have equipped at times due to its slow fire rate and lack of range. The damage is moderately high when shooting from the hip, and you should be able to drop enemies in close quarters in just a few shots. Though because the rate of fire is so slow, missing your target in a one-on-one -on -one gunfight will usually end in a very tragic way for you. At medium ranges, your shots are still going to deal a fair amount of damage, though it does drop off quite early, and so will require an extra blast or two to do the job. And at long range, it's going to take even more direct hits to put someone down. The K-16 can only fire from the hip, and with the lack of optics to help you actually see where you're shooting, along with a much weaker damage output at range and jumpy recoil pattern, makes it a pretty cruddy weapon to use against players that are far away. Because of the high risk of dying when used against players in CQC, with that slow fire rate, this often means that the Briar Pistol tends to be best at medium ranges. It might take a couple of extra shots to kill, but at least you'll have more chance to hide behind cover, or escape from a battle not going in your favour. At close range, you'll be outgunned by a lot of other faster firing weapons, and at long distance, it can be quite hard to be accurate, and when you are, you're not going to deal tremendous amounts of damage anyway. So medium range seems to be the K-16's optimal distance. You can shoot about 10 shots off, one after the other before the gun will overheat. So cooldown's not quite as bad as something like the DL-44, but it can still catch you off guard if you aren't paying attention. Probably the biggest highlight and useful factor that the K-16 has under its belt is an insanely powerful secondary fire. A modified power unit lets you charge up the weapon's energy and unleash a blast, capable of killing infantry in one shot over all distances. 
It plays out a bit like a built-in pulse cannon, though unlike with the star card, you can fire off as many shots as you want without having to wait for a star card cooldown. With that said, you won't have a very good view of your targets at medium to longer distances with the gun's lack of optics. Plus, walking speed is reduced, leaving you vulnerable whilst charging it up, and after firing the blast, you'll also have to contend with an instant weapon cooldown. Not only is the secondary fire a beast against other players, but it also deals tons of damage to automated pickups, like droids and infantry turrets. It works wonders against enemy shields, vehicles will take a lot of damage quickly, and it's also extremely powerful against hero characters too. So, although the K-16's primary fire might not seem as dangerous as you'd like it to at times, because that secondary fire is capable of dealing such high damage to pretty much everything in the game, it makes it a very useful gun to counter enemy tools, vehicles and gadgets, and get you tons of points in the process. The turrets on Hoth don't stand much of a chance to the K-16's charge fire. ATSDs can be destroyed in just a few direct hits, and AT-80s can be heavily weakened by those blasts too in Walker Assault. With both the primary and secondary firing modes, you'll need to lead running targets slightly to ensure your shots are going to hit, as there is some slight travel time for those bolts, and this is essential for hitting enemies, especially at those longer ranges. The gun does jump around a little bit as you fire, so it might take some adjustment to get used to, and it can sometimes help to fire slower, so that you can be a tad more accurate, and get those shots to land where you need them to. Just like the TL-50, because there isn't any aim down sights, the K-16 works well with the Berserker trait, giving you a bonus to damage with hip fire, and this should also buff the weapon and make it seem a bit stronger over range too. Because you can find yourself in a few vulnerable positions, defensive cards like the Jump Pack might help you evade danger, and the Personal Shield could also be good to prevent further damage. Plus, the Bats of Bombs are also a good choice, which is going to help you get back into the fight and give you more of a chance at surviving after an intense battle too. So generally, the K-16 Briar Pistol might not seem like the go-to weapon for most people, and can often seem pretty weak at times with its slow fire rate, poor range and bouncy recoil, but it can deal some decent damage if you land your shots. Though the main attraction to the gun is definitely its secondary fire, and because that charge up mode is capable of wiping out anyone instantly, and cause so much destruction to enemy vehicles, that alone can sometimes make the Briar Pistol a viable option to run with, on maps with lots of things to destroy. The K-16 is definitely not a weapon for everyone, but sure is unique and offers some special advantages that other guns don't. So that's just about it for this one guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, smack that like button if you did, and subscribe for loads more. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.